Income tax 2023-2024. Employment taxes. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to stop the tax man in his tracks with income tax preparation. Okay, maybe we won't be able to stop him, but we're going to we're going to slow him down a bit. Most of this information can be found first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. And in publication 334, Tax Guide for Small Business for Individuals that Use Schedule C Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the individual income tax formula, remember in the first half of the income tax formula, it's basically a funny income statement most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income noting that the sole proprietorship schedule c rolls into line one income of the income tax formula which is confusing because the schedule c itself is basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses otherwise known as business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which then rolls in to line one income of the income tax formula here's the first page of the form 1040 where the schedule c net income ultimately rolls into line number eight additional income from schedule one and this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income where in part one the schedule c net income rolls into line three business income or loss from the schedule c and this is the schedule c the profit or loss from business profit and loss another term for an income statement which has an income statement format income minus expenses okay let's look at the employment taxes now when we think about the taxes for the form 1040 and the schedule c attached to the form 1040 we are typically first primarily thinking about federal income taxes and then of course we saw in prior presentations we have to deal with self-employment taxes which is basically social security and medicare similar to payroll taxes but payroll taxes paid by us in essence on the net income bottom line of the income statement us having to pay employee and employer portion however we also might have a situation where we have employees so now we are a schedule c type of business we're a sole proprietorship we're going to deal with our own social security and medicare in the form of self-employment on the bottom line of the income statement but we also have to pay employees in which case we're going to deal with payroll taxes to them so this is going to be similar to payroll taxes that we would have no matter what kind of entity we were in it's going to be similar in nature to a c corporation for example except that in a c corporation even the executives even the highest up the ceo is also an employee because the, the c corporation is a separate legal entity whereas for us on a schedule c situation we are not going to pay ourselves but only pay the employees and then we have the same kind of rules to be paying the employees in which case we have to withhold federal income tax social security medicare pay both their half taking it out of their wages for social security and medicare and our employer portion okay so if you have employees you will need to file forms to report employment taxes employment taxes are uh, include the following items social security and medicare taxes federal income tax withholding federal unemployment tax or futa tax so one of the things that we need to be considering if we do tax preparation most of the time 
people that do federal income taxes, even CPA firms, often don't also do the payroll taxes and possibly also do not do the bookkeeping. At one time, it used to be that the CPA firms kind of took all of those things uh, in-house. However, as things became more complex, some of these things became more specialized items. So for example, bookkeeping, when you have software, there's even specializations in terms of software, like a QuickBooks versus a Zero or something like that, specializations within industries for help with the bookkeeping. So that's one thing that as a CPA, or I'm sorry, as a tax professional, you might wanna consider. Do you wanna be picking up bookkeeping or not? Do you wanna be networking with people that do the bookkeeping? How is that relationship going to look? How can you steer clients in properly to navigate those relationships as cleanly uh, as possible? Payroll is another area in a similar process. Do you want to be taking on business clients of any nature, whether they be Schedule C businesses or, uh, or as C corporations, S corporations, partnerships, or whatnot, no matter what type of business entity you have, if they're a certain size or if they get above a certain size, they are going to have employees. Some sole proprietors will not because they might just have gig work. You might just say, hey, look, I just do simple sole proprietor businesses. But if they get to a certain size, of course, they will then have employees. Then the question is, how do you want to basically deal with the payroll taxes? It's kind of a bookkeeping question or part of a bookkeeping question in essence. Many softwares have applications that help with the payroll, but uh, sometimes you, you also might hire an external payroll provider as well, like an ADP or a Paychex. So if you have a tax preparation firm, you might partner up with like bookkeepers that help with the bookkeeping. And you might also partner up with people or have connections with people that have payroll or do payroll like an ADP uh, or a paycheck or something like that. So that when we get the information from the tax preparation standpoint, we get the bookkeeping from whoever does the bookkeeping who also might be doing payroll, but we also might have the payroll done externally by a payroll provider and then we might have to do what we need to do to make adjustments to the books to make sure that the payroll properly lines up to the payroll reporting forms, 941s, 940, and the bookkeeping is situated properly. Okay, so for more information, you can see publication 15, circular E, employees, employers, tax guide. The publication explains your tax responsibilities as an employer. Caution. Do not reduce your, uh, your deduction for Social Security and Medicare taxes by the non-refundable and refundable portions of the FFCRA and ARP of 2021 credits for qualified sick and family leave wages claimed on employment tax returns instead reports the credits as income. So this is another kind of legacy or fallout of some of the changes that had and took place during the whole uh, coronavirus situation where there were changes to the laws, much of which are aimed at employment because they were trying to argue that they're gonna try to keep everybody at full employment, even though they say that no one could work, which seems kind of contradictory. But anyways, to help you determine whether the people working for you are employees, you can see publication 15A. So we have a similar situation here as we talked about when we thought about whether or not we were self-employed or not. In other words, when we saw when we said, hey, are we a separate business or are we an employee of our employer? The questionnaires that would come up are, are we do we do our work that are basically separate, meaning are we under direct control on a day-to-day -day and task to task activity by the by the other person, by the employer? If we are, in that case, you would think we would be more likely to be categorized as an employee. If, on the other hand, we are given a task and we have the ability to, to have our own tools and do it our own way so that we just complete the task on our own timetables, then it's more likely that we could be categorized as a uh, sole proprietor or a separate type of business entity. Same situation here. If we're hiring somebody else, then again, remember from the IRS's perspective, 
they like the setup of having an employee employer situation because most large employers the irs already already has their hooks in right so they they're less likely the larger a corporation is that they're going to basically completely lie about their taxes right and they're going to and they're going to want to be able to pressure the employer to be the one responsible for enforcing the smaller people to comply right by issuing the w-2s not only that but also having a withholdings so the irs is going to try to say i want an employee employer relationship you would think would be the general uh, idea so if we're a sole proprietor then to us we need we need help we need someone to work for us if we take on employees one of the problems with that is of course that we have to deal with payroll and payroll is a pain it's a whole it's a whole nother cost that's going to happen no matter how we do it if we do it ourselves likely we're going to make mistakes if we use software we're going to have to pay more if we hire someone else to process the payroll even with a couple employees it's going to cost more and we're going to have to pay our portion of the social security and medicare over and above what we pay the employees if we were to hire them as a contractor then maybe we have to issue them a 1099 and we can simply just pay them similar to us paying any other expense like a utility bill which is obviously a lot easier to do uh typically so so you have to make sure that if you're hiring someone that that if you hire them as a contractor that they qualify as a contractor remembering that the irs is going to be coming after you to be responsible for their income you have to rat them out if you want the deduction in terms of income either they're an employee where you rat them out to the irs by by actually taking their money and paying it to the government on their behalf as well as giving them and the government the w-2 form reporting that information so they must report it on the 1040 or else obviously the irs has that or you might have to give them at least a 1099 even if they're a contractor because again if you don't the irs will, will say do you want that deduction if you want the deduction you have to do that or we come after you with the with the sticks the penalties and interest and we hit you with them right metaphorically all right so that publication has information to help you determine whether an individual is an independent contractor or an employee an independent contractor is someone who is self-employed you generally do not have to withhold or pay any tax on payments made to an independent contractor